Okay, what we have uh, over here on the table is uh, you certainly want to uh, have some kind of a short, short sleeve shirt that usually gets warm. If you don't want to scratch your arms up, you might even consider a uh, something light and a light and a long sleeve shirt. Um, good pair of pants. Uh, long pants is uh, preferable. Jeans is great. Um, I like to wear jeans when I go on spider hunts. And, and then down here is some other equipment that we would use. Let me just uh, kind of show you what we have here. Uh, basically, a, a jar can be used. In uh, this sense here, I have brought a small little plastic uh, cup uh, because it's easier to get behind the web with this. And um, this is the lid that we would use. I just have a plastic lid. It doesn't matter, you can get a ball jar with a tin, tin lid and punch holes in it for air. Uh, you really, it doesn't matter, but the smaller, probably the better. And uh, you're gonna come with the web kind of be here, and you'd come between the web and the lid to catch your, your particular spider. If it's a web uh, orb spider, or you would um, certainly come in different ways to collect other kind of spiders. This is also nice to have. It is a, just a nylon um, uh, bag, open at the top. And within that, I usually carry some plastic baggies. And the reason we bring the baggies along is, uh, if you keep too many spiders in the same bag, uh, they can actually um, dismember each other or kill each other. So if you have one that's a good specimen you're going to bring home, baggie is a good thing to bring. You can blow air into it, seal it off, and keep each spider separate. By the time you get home, then release them into your own garden area. So that's the equipment you need. Not much. So let's, uh, let's begin our spider hunt today. It is just really a beautiful sunny day. The only problem is uh, we're getting a little bit of a late start. If you're going to be doing uh, spider hunting of any sort, you really should be uh, should be getting up early in the morning and getting out there when the dew is starting to come up. And uh, it's a lot easier to find a spider when the dew's on the web. You can see the sun glisten on the web. Then um, a lot easier to find them that way. So we're getting a little bit of a late start. And besides, the, uh, being a beautiful day, is there was really no dew this morning, so we're gonna have a a little bit harder time finding the webs, but I'm sure we'll have some uh, good luck this morning in our spider hunt. Looks like we're the only ones here this morning, so... This is where the adventure begins. We'll be following this path in for a little bit. And uh, until I spot some good areas that look like uh, good places to hunt for spiders. Uh, I want to show you now how the sun works. I did see a web just off here right behind us and it does have some dew in it. Like I told you, early morning spider hunts, uh, the dew makes it very easy to find them. So we'll be turning our attention to the web just right behind us. I think it's a small spider, but at least we'll get an idea of what it looks like as far as dew collecting on the web. So let's go over this way. And uh, here's our early morning sunshine and you can see, we'll be zooming in here on the web, right there. See all the nice dew particles that gather on that web, making it a lot easier for us to see the web and uh, hopefully eventually find the spider. So let's get a little closer to this particular web and see if we can uh, see if anybody's home. Okay, this is the web of, an, of a small orb weaver. And unfortunately, uh, nobody's home here at this house. And he may have decided to have gone somewhere else or he got nervous and dropped down to the ground when he heard us approaching. They do have ears, they can't hear as you approach. Okay. Once again, the dew has proved to be an invaluable tool to find a spider web, as this one right here. And as the camera zooms in closer, you'll see the, um, the web start to appear with the dew drops on it. There it is. See it? And this particular spider, notice that zigzag right there in the web? This would be that of an orb weaver. And one of the species that we've been, I've been trying to find here uh, in the line of the golden garden spider is what its easy name is to remember, or its official name is Argiopis. And he's not home because if he was home, he'd be sitting in his web and hanging upside down towards the ground. But he, for some reason, or her, has abandoned this particular web. So, let's continue our hunt to other places. One thing we use the sun for when hunting spiders is looking for what they call a drag thread. 
And drag threads are a way that a spider uses to travel from place to place and leaving like a, almost like a place for them to, to find their way back. You can see that silver line cutting across horizontally across the center of the screen. That's a drag thread. And the spider has made that crossing sometime this morning. Sometimes it's hard to see it via the camera, but I hope you can catch a glimpse of it. And we try to follow drag threads because they can lead us to an actual full web at some point in time. Here's a little different kind of a spider. They make almost like a, oh, like a hollowed out balloon shape for their web. Okay, I followed a drag thread to this web here. And this looks like a fairly fresh web this morning. So I think we're gonna have maybe some luck finally with our first spider. Okay, I'm approaching from the front and uh, when I was a kid we used to catch these spiders a lot and we'd call them shamrock spiders. And the only reason that I'm guessing we have a shamrock here uh, or what they may call uh, their scientific name a trifolium or we could have a uh, quadratus here. They have a kind of a bulbous shaped body. They come in various colors from marbled colored spider to an orange to a white to a brown. Um, can be even red sometimes with dots on it. Uh, the female can usually be uh, can be all different colors so or white. Um, and I know we have that particular kind of a spider here because I do not see the spider in the web and I know it's a fresh web so we're gonna look for some cluster of leaves that are um, webbed together. That's where they like to hide. They call it their, their recess position where they like to hide and wait. They have a web that runs down from the recess position all the way down to the web and they can feel the vibration of anybody entering the web from that point, rush out of the recess area, grab its victim, poison it, and then wrap it up for later eating. Let's see if we can find that recess position in this web. Usually near the top somewhere with some leaves. Okay. I'm guessing it's right here. And let's see if we can get a little bit closer to see if anybody is okay. Let's zoom in and get right on that little nest area as much as we can with the camera before it blurs. Aha, we do have somebody home. You'll see in the upper left hand corner of our picture we have some legs. White legs with black knuckles. It's interesting in a spider's legs, a human being's legs, we have one kneecap area, one knee area, which is a one bend in the uh, spider. They have like five different knee bend areas. And this particular spider is definitely home. You can see him. And it looks like she's white. And we're going to see if we can um, bring her out. And the way I do that is by gently squeezing the actual uh, nesting area or the the recess area and we'll do that in just a moment some people like to use big bags underneath or long nets I like to do it uh, kinda hands-on for a nicer gentler approach okay I'm gonna come in here now and I'm gonna put my little container around back and underneath his area so that if he drops out we won't lose him. Okay, I got it positioned right under where he's at. I'm just give a little gentle squeeze above him and he should drop right out. And there he goes. Right in our cup. See him? 